So, now I'm going to show you how to do plastic embedding of the sample. And usually when you embed the, the sample in plastic, you do that in vacuum also. In this machine you create vacuum around the sample. Then you put in your, your resin compound. Let air in again and then the air will press the epoxy plastic into the, into the sample. In that way you get good penetration, if, even if you have a very porous material. When you do a plastic embedding, you can have different kinds of plastics compounds. Usually there are two components, but also three and four are common. Why you use different ones is because it depends on what you're going to do later. Some plastics are more resistant to electron, ele the electrons in the electron microscope when you analyze them. Some plastics are different hardness, so you need to match that with your sample. You want to have an equal hard sample as the material. This is especially uh, important when you do microtone. Different plastics have different kinds of penetration, and the penetration into the material can also deform the material. So here you need to, to take good care in choosing the right plastic. In today's demonstration, I'm going to use a two-component plastic. And that plastic is, uh, we, and the plastic we're going to use is only hardened in, in room temperature. It's also quite common that you harden the plastics in oven. Here you can see that I already put the paper pieces inside a metallic spring. That makes them easy to get them standing straight up. Then I put them in this plastic cup. This cup is going to be filled with the epoxy resin. So here I put the cup on the scale. This is a very easy method to get the right proportion of the epoxy. I already put in the first component in the, in, into the cup. So here I put in the second one. Usually there are different proportions and the one I'm putting in now is the one that is the larger amount. Make sure you get the right proportion. The next thing we're going to do is that you need to stir, stir the epoxy very firmly for several minutes. Otherwise they will not mix properly. So here I just use a wood chip to stir the cup. Nothing fancy about this. So this is the vacuum machine. It is driven by pressurized air. I put the epoxy in the cup next to the machine, right, like so. Take off the hood and the protective chamber that goes around. Then I put in my sample that I'm going to fill with plastic. The paper beneath is just a protection so I don't get any glue on, onto the machine. The top piece has a small hole that goes through a rubber seal. In that one we're going to put in a small hose. And during the vacuum stage the plastic will be transported through this hose down to the cup. And then I turn on the vacuum by turning this knob. You can see that this chamber sucks together and shrinks in size a little. Now we're going to wait a while. Here you can see the epoxy is transporting through the hose down to the cup. It's dropping in small drops. Now the cup has been filled with the, enough of the plastic that I want. So then I turn off the vacuum. The machine will let air inside again. And you can see that the epoxy will stop to drop. I then remove the hose again. This hose is a one-time use. Because it's filled with epoxy, it will, after it's been hardened, it will be of, of no use anymore. If this would have been a resin compound that needed a hardening in, in oven, then the next step would be to put this in oven overnight. But this one is cold, cold hardening. And I use cold hardening epoxy today just because my sample for the day is heat sensitive. And here it is, the final result after it's been hardened. Now we're going to polish this.